Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Bittner and special guest Ted from Brain Scratch Comps to discuss the rumor that a new Paper Mario game is coming to the Wii U. So let's get started. Alright guys, so this rumor is hot off the presses. <laughs> uh, apparently, there is a uh, someone in Japan went to a job expo and encountered someone from Intelligent Systems there, like, I guess, manning their booth. And he provided, um, there's a picture of, like, the uh, paperwork from the event showing an Intelligent Systems pamphlet. So it seems like, uh, you know, at the least, that event actually happened. Now, on top of this, though, uh, the poster mentions that the uh, person from Intelligent Systems apparently dropped, or dropped the fact that they're working on Paper Mario for the Wii U. And that's basically all that's known at this point, I'm assuming that's even true. So, I thought, of course, it'd be fun to discuss our thoughts on, one, how realistic this rumor is, and two, what we'd like to see from Paper Mario on the Wii U. So, um, let's go start off with you, Ted. What do you think about the plausibility of this rumor? Well, I'm just gonna start off by saying that if it is true, and this guy did just drop casually at some sort of job expo that they're working on a <laughs> new Paper Mario, I feel really bad for this guy because he's probably <laughs> already fired. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, that's okay. He's already at the job expo, so he's a, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Derek. <laughs> yeah, but um, let's. Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Like, I, I love Paper Mario. Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door is one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, to be honest, it's you know I kind of just instinctively try not to get my hopes up because there's a new rumor about a Paper Mario game for whether it be for Wii U, 3DS, like every other week. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of learned to kind of be pretty cynical about it. But I do at the very least think that this is a little bit more promising than normal because for one thing, this rumor actually came out of Japan as opposed to just like some random 4chan or NeoGAF board. Right. Um, and for another thing, I think the fact that We've gotten so many uh, Paper Mario rumors over the past couple of months. Really kind of goes to show how much people are in demand for a true Paper Mario game. Yeah. And, you know, it, and I don't think even Nintendo's uh, oblivious enough not to have heard that. It has been more so. than 10 years since, the, since what most would consider the last true Paper Mario game, so... I like Super Paper Mario. I, I, I mean, that's fine. I'm just saying it's not really a true Paper Mario game, though. I would argue. Not, not, yeah. not really. <laughs> what are you talking about? It has RPG elements. They're made of paper. It, it totally is a, a uh, Paper Mario. <laughs> it's exactly game. the same. <laughs> exactly yeah. the same. All the uh, way. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much with Ted. Uh, you know, it's you almost have to be cynical about rumors nowadays because, as we've seen, they all are so easily faked, but this one is kind of unique because, as they, as you guys said, it came out of Japan. It's not really any bombast. It's just sort of like a casual dr name drop. Like, oh yeah, we're working on this, on, you know, this, this new fire, this new uh, Paper Mario. And it just happens to be so casual that it's like, well, maybe it could be. Maybe it could actually be something. I mean, it's hard to say... Exactly. That's, well, that's what that's the difficult thing about working with rumors. Of course, I'm with you guys. I'd love to have a new Paper Mario game on the Wii U. I think it's a great choice. I think there's a lot of demand there. Whether or not this is actually happening, I'm still on the fence. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't disagree with any of what you guys said. Um, I mean, normally, like this rumor literally ha literally has no proof at all. It's like one of the few <laughs> times. Uh, where we've discussed something with absolutely like, no visual or any, you know any supposed evidence at all, uh, so it is hard to say either way. But because of that, it almost seems more plausible for that reason, doesn't it? It's weird, isn't it? It is, it is very <laughs> weird, right? So it could be well, completely no, off base, but it, it makes sense. The less information you give, the less likely you are to be wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that, that is, that is <laughs> true. If you think about it this way, like, you know, to be 100% honest, I'm sure that people in intelligent systems are almost constantly throwing around ideas for new Paper Mario games, and, you know, plenty of them probably just don't see the light of day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, you know, the fact that they said, oh, we're working on a new Paper Mario game, it's not quite as much of a sure thing as someone from EAD saying, oh, we're working on a new Mario game, but it's still, I think, you know, a relatively believable thing that they might be working on a new Paper Mario game. It just might not ever come to fruition or something like that. But if they had said, oh, we're working on a new part a Paper Mario game, it's definitely going to have partners back and, you know, other things like that. If they had revealed story details, mm -hmm. I think we'd be more likely to to call it out because we kind of see the the cracks a little bit more yeah so. it does feel like something so i mean 
it's weird because Nintendo usually does not have leaks of this type. Um, you know, where employees just casually talk about something they're working on. And the closest thing I can think of is, like, when Miyamoto uh, announced they were making Pikmin 3. Mostly out of frustration, it seemed. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I, you know, you know, accidents do happen, right? It's easy, you know, if you're not... It's easy to just let loose with something you're working on. Um, unintentionally, perhaps. I mean, who knows? Um, but the fact that this event seems to have happened, this person seems to have been there... I don't know. It just seems unlikely that, you know, that they would go... That they will make up something after that fact. It's entirely possible. Entirely possible, of course. But it seems... I don't know. It, it, it seems weird to me that someone would go to an event and then make up a rumor based on, you know, based on that event. So, I, what I'm saying is, like, I see that I could be... This could be plausible. Um, especially given the fact that Iwata himself has recently said there are unannounced Wii U games down, you know, coming down the pike. And, uh, you know, we'll probably be finding out about them next month at E3. So, and then there is also another fact that I thought was interesting. It was a couple years ago, uh, there was a rumor from uh, Nintendo Everything, I probably posted elsewhere as well, I'm sure, about someone who worked at Intelligent Systems and they had an unannounced Wii U game on their on their resume. And uh, granted, that could have been... Um, they've only really had, I think, I think, one Wii U game since then from Intelligent Systems, which was Pushmo World. So it's possible that was it. Uh, but, you know, maybe it was referring to Paper Mario, and if that's the case, that means this game's been in development for a couple years, and it's probably almost done. Uh, at which, you know, which means it could be coming out this year. You know, announcement E3, and maybe coming out this year, which would be awesome. That, that does make an awful lot of sense, now that I think about it, because, uh, a Paper Mario game, while it certainly has, like, the sort of fan support, like, people love these games, it's not, I don't, for some reason, I get the feeling that the more traditional... Uh, gaming press might not make as big of a, a hype about it because it's you know it's still technically a Mario spin-off even though it's you know one of the most beloved Mario spin-offs <laughs> um, so I think it would make sense for Nintendo to quietly make this game and then announce it just a couple of months before its release like you know yeah. um, so like if I think if we do see it at uh, this E3, you know, just a big if scenario. I think if we see it at this E3, it would probably be released by uh, by November. Right. You know, for the for the holiday rush and all that. That would mm -hmm. actually be great because we've talked about before how it seems like you know with Zelda being delayed, what is your big quarter four title? Uh, you know, we thought maybe it could be Star Fox. Maybe that will take Zelda's place as a big game, even though the, it may not be up to the task, so to speak. <laughs> uh, Paper Mario could be that game they need. Well, the other thing that Awada has said is that not only are, do they have more games to announce, but many of these games are coming out this year. Yeah. So it, that sort of lends it even, even further credence. Uh, the question I have is how soon before Sticker Star's release did Sticker Star get announced? Because I know oh. they had like a, like, a little like teaser picture or video, like a, few, a snippet that was part of something else that was saying, this is coming to the 3DS. Yeah, when but, the 3DS was announced was when they first showed off Sticker Star, but it was a very different game back then. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the the, the chain chomp partner. Where did right. you go, man? <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> right? I mean, you you go back and you watch that first uh, trailer for Sticker Star, and it looks like sort of it it looks like a, a spiritual successor to the original Paper Mario sixty four, like that same sort of tone, mm -hmm. which you know I thought would have been great because I I love the original Paper Mario to death as well. But it, nope, we got stickers <laughs> Yay. yeah Yay. stickers <laughs> so what, from the official uh, reveal of sticker star to the actual release how was there that much of a gap yeah that was a couple years okay. yeah there was a there was a there was a good i think like six months or so where we got like no information at all about sticker star if i remember correctly so mm -hmm. it kind of went under the radar for a while uh, a while and i think they underwent some severe development changes during that period. Now, speaking of development, though, um, they, you know, Intelligent Systems, they aren't a huge developer. According to the Wikipedia, they have about 130 employees, They're, you know, which isn't small by any means, but, you know, not gigantic. And so far, they've already, re you know, they've released Codename Steam this year. They have Fire Emblem coming up, and then they have the crossover game, supposedly already, you know, uh, coming out this year as well. So that's three games for them already. And I'm wondering if they had the bandwidth to make a fourth, assuming Paper Mario does come out this year. But, you know, then there's a fact that, is that crossover game actually being made by them, or is that mostly an Atlas game, perhaps? And that would, you know, open up some bandwidth for them to work on Paper Mario. I'm not sure who's primarily handling uh, Shin Megami Tensei Cross. Yeah, they're, they're both listed as developers, so yeah, I'm not sure which one's primarily yeah. handling it, though. It, it, to me, it almost looks like they're, just from that trailer, it feels more like 
intelligence systems is taking an uh, advisory role, and Atlas is the one handling most of the development because that was my it impression too. Feels yeah. so much like a uh, Shin Megami Tensei game uh, than more than Fire Emblem because it's obviously it's not even a uh, turn-based strategy game. So there's that whole uh, aspect. So that that could be the key factor here where they just have enough free time. And if it's the case here where they've been working on this in the background for years, it might have just been a side project while they worked on all this other stuff as well. So they just sort of slowly chipping away at it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I took a quick peek at the Shin Megami Tensei Fire Emblem trailer from the Nintendo Direct, and at the beginning when they're flashing logos, they just show Atlas and Nintendo, not Intelligent Systems itself. Right. So mm-hmm. I have a feeling that their involvement probably would be more advisory, as opposed to actual like lending manpower coding and, and all that. I think it's a, a primarily Atlas-focused development for that game. And I mean, granted, they, they still have three uh, that's still like if paper mario does come out later this year uh, that would still be three relatively big games in one year you know codename steam which was all in 3d fire emblem 14 which uh, i does reuse a lot of gameplay ideas uh, and i think is just a modified engine of awakening but still you know that uh, an art a strategy rpg does take a lot of time to make mm-hmm. and then you know a wii u game uh, is ob- uh, which you probably would not be able to reuse any existing code at all would probably take a large amount of their manpower, I think, as well. Yeah, I mean, that it does seem like... I mean, that is, that is, yeah, three large games, but they have often released between two to three games a year. Although I do think this would be the uh, largest slate of games they've released in terms of uh, each game, you know, individually being big. Because I think in, like in 2012, they had... Uh, uh, they had a Fire Emblem, they had Crash Mo, which is a smaller game, and they had Sticker Star as well. So, I don't know, it's possible, you know, maybe they expanded since since then, and maybe they, you know, are able to do it. At any rate, it sounds like we all agree this could be plausible, and, uh, based on that, let me just say that is true. I'm pretty excited. I love Paper Mario. <laughs> My only hope, and granted, I say that as if it's a small thing, is that it's good. <laughs> because <laughs> it's been so long since Thousand Year Door. I just want a game... You know, in that vein. It doesn't have to be exactly like that. You know, paper, even Thousand Year Door itself was different compared to Paper Mario 64 to some degree. Like, they switched to some mechanics, and uh, that was cool, and I'd be fine to do something along those lines for this new one. Like, I just want a story-based Paper Mario with fun, simple RPG mechanics and a large world to explore. Is that asking so much? Oh, and good characters. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's, it's just a port of the GameCube game, so we need to put in... We need to put in notebooks everywhere, and it's Paper Mario Notebook Star now. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm basically in the same exact boat. Now, I'm part of the, the, the group that actually enjoyed Super Paper Mario. Uh, you know, that game definitely had its issues, and they, they were plentiful. But at the end of the day, it was still a game that I, you know, enjoyed. I, I love that game's plot. It's it's a surprisingly well-written story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also part of the, the, the crew that hates sticker star to death because <laughs> uh that 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 you barely even have to play that game it, it plays itself like literally almost <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, paper mario thousand year door one of my all-time favorites i, I don't need it to be 100 percent exactly like it like if they were to add a new mechanic to mix things up or change how some of the action commands worked or you know whatever um i i'd be down with that it's just, you know, I, I want something that uses that as a base and works off it from there as opposed to something 100% weird and different <laughs> because it's been long enough that I don't, it, the series doesn't need to be shaken up. It just needs to do what no, they know works, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I think after, you know, you have to imagine after the feedback of Sticker Star that they realize, okay, that was a bad direction to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of weird because Sticker Star got relatively okay critical reception. Not from so. us. <laughs> no, oh, oh, yeah, true. Not from you guys. But if I take a quick look at it at their uh, at the Metacritic, yeah. you know, Paper Mario six, uh, Sticker Star has a seventy five, which you know isn't God, great, but that's way not too high. Jesus, that, that is yeah. There <laughs> were a lot. I saw a lot of like eight point when that game came out. Uh, in uh, came out. And, so I know, gave that I gave that game a two out of five. In the hindsight, I'm pretty sure I still overrated it. I hate that game. I hate you know, that game. That the game is just absolutely awful. It um, is like and, it's not even okay. Not even as a Paper Mario game. It's straight up as a game. It's god awful. 
<laughs> it's a oh. terrible game. <laughs> oh no! Like I think we could we could go for hours just bashing on why Sticker Star. <laughs> I never played it, so I have no opinion other than the don't. fact that everybody <laughs> says it's bad. <laughs> don't don't do it. Um, the but I you know I think they've learned from that. See what they do because people you know I think even people who rated it highly still said where are the where are the side characters? Where's the story? Where's anything more to this? Because. When you think Paper Mario, you think those elements. You have these crazy characters. You have, uh, you know, this really in-depth story. It's just um, not in-depth, but, you know, a fun story. Uh, you know, they, they poke fun at themselves and everything else. And I, I'd like to see them return to that because that's half the fun of Paper Mario games. You just get into the uh, what they're trying to tell you. And like uh, you get new villains and you get uh, fun little scenarios. And I'd love to see... Like, I love being able to play as Peach and Bowser and Luigi in Super Paper Mario, so I'd love to see them come back as characters as well as other new characters as uh, partners as well. Um, sort of give it a comp combination of um, Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario, where you have just, you know, maybe maybe really change it up and get three, you know, get two side characters to help out Mario or something like that. I, I you know, I have no idea, but uh, I, I think there's ways to make it evolve, but still stick closely to the uh, Thousand Year Door formula. You mentioned bringing back Bowser. I would love Bowser to come back if they give him dialogue, which they didn't do in Sticker Star for some reason, despite <laughs> Paper Mario Bowser being quite possibly the best video game villain <gasps> ever existing. <laughs> oh, you're just making it hurt so much right now, talking about Sticker Star. <laughs> I forgot Bowser didn't talk at all in this game. In that game, that was so weird. What a weird choice to have. Yeah, it, you, you go and you examine. Bowser's dialogue in Super Paper Mario and the Bowser sections in Thousand Year Door and then go back to Sticker Star where he's silent. It's just why? Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I think there's some stuff they could do to mix it up while retaining the core of what made the original Paper Mario games what they were. I feel like having the gamepad might give them... I feel... I don't know. For whatever reason, I'm getting the idea that they would use the gamepad in some unique way for battle, maybe. Um, well, I mean... I can I can think of quite a few ways that like action commands could work because yeah. you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to simple motions for action commands like I don't know like maybe swinging the thing swinging the gamepad slightly instead of holding back the analog stick for the hammer or something and if they got super moves like uh like the crystal star moves in Thousand Year Door I can imagine them doing some like wacky kind of stuff with the with the gyroscope the camera the touchscreen and so on yeah i can I say did... like maybe like a first person targeting thing for some moves for instance you know if you choose a move you quickly target the enemy by aiming the gamepad at them yeah. that'd be really cool yeah i mean who but... knows like there's any number of ideas they could go with <laughs> the big hope for me is that bowser's a character but bowser isn't the main villain like maybe you start maybe like bowser works his best when he's sort of like an antagonist to mario but not like the main antagonist bowser shines so much because he's working off the idea that you know these guys have sort of t taken his spotlight and he wants it back because he is the true king of evil i mean he's fun as an antagonist role as uh paper mario 64 proves but I, I like the fact of like him begrudgingly helping Mario when the, like him still being completely full of himself and but like okay I need to take this guy down first before I can take care of Mario. Well, like when they have a know. common enemy or something. So exactly. Yeah. Well, not even when they have like a common. Just because they have a common enemy doesn't necessarily mean that they have to work with Mario. Because like one of my favorite parts of Thousand Year Door is when Bowser crushes through the ceiling at the very end of the game, and instead of helping Mario get back Peach, he just fights Mario because Mario's there and he needs to be punched. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I'm 100% agree. I would like Bowser to be in there in some form, uh, hopefully with Peach. <laughs> um, but other than that, you know. I think part of the reason why it's so frustrating to be a Paper Mario fan these past couple of years is because it doesn't seem that hard to make just a sequel to Thousand Year Door. Right? You know. <laughs> like, I mean, you just say, yeah, we just said it. Like, just make a sequel to Thousand Year Door. How hard can it be? <laughs> no, it's just, you know, we don't need, I don't need anything fancy. Like, you, you tried to shake it up with Super Paper Mario. That's great. It didn't quite work out. Go back to what works. And that's really all I need. Like, you know some fun new action commands fun characters a you know a, a touching story uh, that's that's really all i need it doesn't need to be anything complicated in fact i think part of paper mario's charm is that it isn't very complicated they're very simple fun 
games that you can just play whenever you feel like, and they, they never get old because of that. So they have, you know, they don't even have to change that much. Just add in all the elements that they've uh, integrated into the Mario series since Thousand Year Doors, and make them items and weapons, and integrate them into the battle system, and you have something that could work really well. Uh, the one thing that I'm really looking forward to, though, assuming this happens, I would love I, the game itself. I think would look gorgeous uh, in HD. Like the original, I mean, going from the original game to uh, Thousand Year Door was a huge step up. It looked amazing on the GameCube. It had a great art style that still that still holds up. And I would just love to see that translated into an HD game. Like I think it would just look beautiful. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Thousand Year Door ages beautifully. You know, I think it's j the art style that they go for really is very timeless. And you know. Say what you will about Sticker Star as a game, it did look pretty good. I, I like things actually looked like they were made of cardboard, and there were nice little details. Like if you if you moved the the system, like the the shiny stickers on the bottom would like reflect light at different angles and, that, and that, stuff. That actually was cool. I did whole cool bits on that on that actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know. Sticker Star, you know, I will begrudgingly say that game's presentation is pretty good, and seeing that in, like, HD graphics, I think, would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, the presentation is not the issue. Like, when it comes to, like, presenting this paper world, they always nail it. It does oh, everything yeah. that supports that. I mean, we know they can nail. Look at what they did with uh, Epic Yarn and uh, Yoshi's, Epi uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. Just take that idea of Woolly World, take it into paper, and then you get this beautiful... Uh, looking Paper Mario, uh, like it could literally make it a pop-up book type thing, and it would look gorgeous. Absolutely, I'm with you. All right, well, I think that about wraps up for us here. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explainers. You can find links to it in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on everything we post. And Ted, do you want to do you want to tell everyone where they can find you at? Uh, yes, I'm a member of Brain Scratch Comms. We are a video game commentary group where we talk about all manner of different games, including the original Paper Mario 64, which we've done a few years back, and Somewhat soon, we might be doing another Paper Mario game. Maybe Sticker Star best? confirmed. Uh, no, <laughs> I have not. I'm not recording that one. <laughs> no, we're playing. We're playing a good one. I, right. I promise. Nice. <laughs> And of course, keep an eye on GameExplained.com for uh, hopefully more on this rumor uh, once it's confirmed as a real game at E3, hopefully, and other things gaming as well. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. Bye.